3.4 Derivatives of Trigonometric Functions First we're going to look at the sine function and try and see what its derivative must look like graphically. Now we haven't done much graphically yet. Um, in fact, those were the sections that we skipped it at the end of chapter 2, which we will go back to, but just a very brief overview of how you would draw the derivative of the sine function is this. First of all, here's a graph of the sine function. And graphing its derivative means that we want to graph the slopes of the tangent lines. So the easiest part would be to look at all the maxes and the mins, the local maxes and the local mins. We would have a tangent line of zero there. The slope is zero. So everywhere we see a horizontal tangent line, we would graph a zero on our derivative function. So just below here, I'm trying to graph the derivative function. Here, for instance, I see from here to here, I first begin by the slope is getting steeper and steeper and steeper, negative, and then it begins to get less steep and less steep and less steep, which is indicated by it was negative the whole time, the slope was always negative, but at this point here it began getting less steep and that's why I came back up. Now you do not need to be able to draw the derivative yet. We will get there. I just wanted to show it to you because it's very cool that the derivative of the sine graph resembles the graph of cosine, doesn't it? Oh, we can also look at this algebraically and go back to trying to prove what the derivative of sine is. So if we use f of x equals sine x, and we find the derivative by using the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. And here's our sine function there. Remembering our um, sine rules, if we have sine of a plus b, for instance, we get sine a cosine b plus cosine a sine b. That was just our sine rule. If you did use that, you would get this for the sine of x plus h minus sine of x all over h. Continue simplifying. So you get sine x cosine h minus sine of x. I kind of put all this stuff with the sine x's there. And then I put the cosine x sine h here. And why I did this, I wouldn't expect you to know right now, but this is just a proof. You do not need to know it. We can factor the sine x out because remember I said I put all the sine x stuff together. So let's factor that sine x out. And then let's, co let's factor the cosine x out here. And then we're left with this. <clears throat> and we can just push the limit through using the limit laws. So now we're left with a couple questions. First left with these two obvious questions. The limit as h approaches 0 of sine x. Well, that's just going to be sine x. Why? Because there's no h even in here. So it's just itself. And the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine x is just going to be cosine x. So those are obvious. These next two are not so obvious, but you do need to memorize them for the AP exam. So please maybe box them, go over them again later. But you do need to know both of these. That the limit as h approaches 0 of sine h over h equals 1. And the limit as h approaches 0 of cosine h minus 1 over h equals 0. So you just have to memorize those. So using those two things, we can go back to where we were before. We were at this step here. And we just get sine x times 0 plus cosine x times 1, which is cosine x. So we have just found that the derivative of sine is cosine. So let's do an example using that. Let's try and find the derivative. So here we will need a product rule. Here's our first, here's our second. The derivative is just the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of sine is just cosine. Using similar methods, we can also show that the derivative of cosine is actually negative sine. 
for tangent, let's go ahead and do this problem because it's a good problem to do. It's just requiring us to use the quotient rule. We know that tangent is the same thing as sine over cosine. Take the derivative of the first, the derivative of sine is just cosine times the second, which is the bottom, minus the first times the derivative of the second, the derivative of cosine is negative sine, all over the second squared. So we get cosine squared plus sine squared. And remember your trig identities, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. And 1 over cosine is secant, so 1 over cosine squared would be secant squared. So we've just learned another important thing. The derivative of tan x is secant squared. So if you go ahead and look at the next slide, I have all of the trig derivatives that you need to know. You must memorize all of these. Something to remember, I always think of the derivative of cosine as a bad sign, and um, that's just for the negative sign, so that's how I remember which one has the negative. The derivative of cosine is a bad sign. Okay, it's a bad sign. Um, note also that all the trig functions that begin with a C, so like the cosine, the cosecant and the cotangent, all of those have negative derivatives. So that's another good thing to remember. You will hear me saying the derivative of cosine, it's a bad sign. You will hear me saying that in the future, so you'll know, you'll know what I mean. Of course, sine, the sine function is S-I-N-E, but you know, it's a bad sign. Okay, my humor doesn't go very far. Um, example two, let's try and find the derivative of this. So we're going to need to use a quotient rule here. So if we look at our rules, the derivative of secant is just secant tangent. So the derivative of the first times the second minus the first times the derivative of the second. The derivative of one is just zero. The derivative of tangent is secant squared all over the second squared. And so let's just try and simplify this. So we get secant x tan x plus secant x tan squared x minus secant cubed x why don't we go ahead and factor secant out of the top So we don't really know what to do here, but we do recall that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, and we want things with tan squared here, so why don't we go ahead and divide everything by cosine squared. So we get tan squared plus one equals secant squared, and that's great, because we have a tan squared minus secant squared here, and can't we just make this into tan squared minus secant squared equals negative one? So we can replace this with a negative one. And so that's about all we can do, but we still have to answer the second part of our question which says, for what values of x does the graph have horizontal tangents?
And we recall that is when the derivative equals zero. And so to make this fraction equal to zero, we would just have to set the numerator equal to zero. Which means that we either have secant x equals zero or tan x minus one equals zero. And secant x can't ever be equal to zero because that's defined by one over cosine. So we're just left with tan x equals one, which is pretty much saying when does sine equal cosine? And that happens at either pi over four or five pi over four and every time around. In other words, at every pi over four plus pi k. And just recall that the period of the tangent function is pi. And then on this slide, here's the graph so that you can see visually what's happening. That's it for this lesson.